Shohei Otani is the most recent superstar to come from overseas and become a star in Major League Baseball. Otani is arguably the best player in baseball, but he wasn't the first star to come from Japan and show what he can do in the States. Just this offseason, three players from Japan have signed with their respective teams. Kodai Singa to the Mets, Masataka Yoshida to the Red Sox, and Shintaro Fujinimi to the Athletics. There's been plenty of other Japanese players, some being completely forgettable, others being solid but never a superstar like Otani, and the most notable of them all, future Hall of Famer Ichiro Suzuki. We can talk about Ichiro for a long time, but all we really need to mention is he started his major league career at age 27 and still ended up with more than 3,000 career hits. But the best player to ever play in Japan never played in the big leagues. Historic players said nothing but compliments for him. Charlie Hustle said if he had played in a park tailored to his swing, he'd have hit 35 homers a year. He'd hit 300, I'll tell you that. Arguably the greatest defender in MLB history, Brooks Robinson, discussed that he could have played right here in the big leagues with the best players in the world. He was just an outstanding hitter. Hal McRae, a 19-year veteran, mentioned he'd have been a Hall of Famer. MVP winner Don Baylor described him as someone who would have no doubt hit 40 home runs in a season. And don't tell Frank Robinson if you disagree. He was extremely vocal hyping him up. You can kiss my ass if he wouldn't have hit 30 or 35 home runs a year and hit anywhere from 280 to 320 and driving up to 120 runs a year. The point being, he rates with the all-time stars of the game. Don't take it from just the bats either. Hall of Fame pitcher Tom Seaver stated, he sure hit me. He'd be a lifetime 300 hitter. He had tremendous discipline at the plate. He could pull your hard stuff and you couldn't fool him off speed. To be recognized by this many great players without even playing in the majors is insane. Before we find out who all these all-time greats are hyping up, Baseball season is on the horizon and you won't want to miss any of the action in person. Go to SeatGeek, find some good tickets, use promo code BREWPACK, exactly like my channel name is spelled, and get yourselves $20 off your first purchase. This is also good for nearly anything that requires a ticket. Basketball, football, hockey, any sport, any concert, whatever you are looking for, get yourselves 20 bucks off. Sadaharu O oh is the GOAT of Japan. Unfortunately for him and baseball fans everywhere, he never got to prove what he could do in the States and prove what these other players said about him. O oh wouldn't have been the first Japanese player in the majors, but he would have been the first position player. Masanori Marikami was the first back in 1964, and there was another one until Hideo Nomo in 1995. O oh was like the Josh Gibson of Japan. Both were all-time greats in their respected league. Gibson in the Negro Leagues, but like O, he never got a chance to show what he could do in the majors since Gibson retired the year before Jackie broke the color barrier. There's a lot of other players we never got to see play against other big league players. Cool Papa Bell for 21 years, while Satchel Paige didn't get his chance until the age of 41, playing five seasons at an elite level, but we can only imagine the numbers he would have put up if he started at age 20 like he did in the Negro Leagues. Racism wasn't the only reason with O though. In fact, it wasn't even a huge reason. Free agency in Japan also didn't really exist at the time. It wasn't official then until 1993. Long after O's career. There was also just some major disagreements between Japan and the majors during the 60s, which needs a lot more details, but pretty much Japan didn't want their players in the States. Although O never got his chance in the league, he still got to face major league arms. He actually played 110 games in exhibition. In 338 at bats, he had a 413 OBP, 25 home runs, and a 524 slugging. In nearly two thirds of a season against other major leaguers, O still proved that he could put up all star to MVP numbers, yet no one gave him a chance on a team. We debate who the all time home run leader is in MLB. Bonds is the official number at 762, but many people still believe it's Hammer and Hank who hit 755 without any extra help. O beat both of those numbers by more than 100, hitting 868 career home runs. 13 straight home run titles in 15 of 16. Putting up those type of power numbers, you do have to mention that his home stadium, Korakuen Stadium, the left and right field dimensions were only 288 feet. Unlike the polo grounds that was 483 dead center, the deepest part of the stadium was less than 400 feet. Two time triple crown winner and a career 1080 OPS, but there wasn't a Nolan Ryan, Bob Gibson, or Tom Seaver pitching in Japan at that time. 
Then again, Tom Seaver even said he hit off him and hit 300 lifetime in the big league. These other all-time great players realized how great he would have been even while facing that type of pitching in big league ballparks, but at the same time realizing he'd be closer to 30 home runs rather than 40 to 50 per year. There's no way to tell if O would have been that guy in the majors. Only stats we have are what he did in the exhibition games, but that was less than one full season. Hank Aaron, who was known for being one of the most humblest guys in baseball history, talked about going over to Japan to play in a fun derby against O, where he beat him 10 to nine. Then after he said, it doesn't necessarily prove that I'm a better hitter than O because it wasn't under game conditions and we didn't bat against pitchers who wanted to strike us out. O hit in Japan. MLB Hall of Famers say he would have hit in the majors and he hit MLB pitching when he had the chance. There is no controversy about his playing career, but after that he decided to be a manager. Just like his playing career, he won games, but this time as a manager. He held the all-time home run record and also the single season home run record with 55 until this past decade. There was a few players who came very close to defeating that record, but O didn't let them. In 1985, Randy Bass was sitting on 54 home runs in the last game of the season. He was walked four straight times on four straight balls, and it later came out that a Giants coach threatened a thousand dollars for every strike a pitcher threw to Bass, although it was never confirmed. In 2001, Tuffy Rhodes had 55 with one series left against O's managed team. He was intentionally walked every single time and the pitching coach ordered his pitchers to do it, stating, I just didn't want a foreign player to break O's record. Lastly, the next season, Alex Cabrera had 55 with five games left in the season against O's managed team. Every single ball was thrown far away from the plate. It didn't take the smartest person to realize what had happened those three times, and ESPN saw it too. When they called O's single season home run record, one of the phoniest records in sports. His record was broken in 2013 when Vladimir Ballantin hit 60. O wasn't managing at the time. So what do you guys believe? Could O have had a better career than Ichiro and his 3,000 hits, or even better than the current nearly two-time MVP, Shohei Otani? 2-2 to two, two, Shohei Otani! He has done it! Wow! Way back! We are tied up his second three-run jack of the night! 0-2 coming. It is in there! A career-high 13 strikeouts for Shohei Otani!